All right, what's going on? The reason why this video is being made is because I'm not seeing the most efficient extraction um, from people who own firearms. Uh, anytime you work on a machine or anything like that, you want to be as efficient as possible. That efficiency only comes from doing the basics over and over and over again. You see what I'm saying? You do the basics, right? And then slowly you start the basics, right? And then you start to speed up, right? Until you get this ultra clean extraction. All right, so I just want to be able to clear it up for people. Um, so I'm going to turn to the side so you can kind of see what's going on with this extraction. Now look here. When I extract this gun, there is a reason why the hand comes here. It's not simply going up here like that as to say, oh my gosh, I'm getting ready to, you know, extract my weapon system or whatever. No, it, it, it serves a purpose, right? So on that initial extraction, when that arm comes up, my, when I do it, I can't speak for another person. I can only speak for when I do it, right? So when I extract this gun, no matter what the reason is going to be, that hand comes up here first. This elbow comes to protect or to move, right? Or to protect the extraction process in its entirety. That's the reason why you do it. Well, I do it. You know, some people will simply be here and they say, oh, okay, this is what I was taught to do. So we have to start moving from um, performing what we are taught to do and start thinking about uh, what uh, the bunkai is, or that's a Japanese term before any martial artists out there. The bunkai meaning the, the meaning behind the application of whatever the function that you're getting ready to execute. So the bunkai, you know, comes up here, boom, there. I see what's going on. Now, I don't know if you can see because there's a lens I got, um, and it's a new lens, by the way. When I, when I make the extraction, the extraction is not simply standing straight up, right? The extraction has a total body movement, a whole body movement. So if someone's here, I want to extract here. I'm going there, right? We want to focus on letting them know that we are aggressively moving um, offline from the primary target or whatever the um, intended uh, subject to be shoot or shot is going to be. So we're gonna move offline. So I'm here. I see that. So the elbow comes up. It's not only uh, if I uh, close to someone or whatever, they know that they're gonna get hit with this elbow if they don't move, right? So we're gonna create a little bit of that gap right between me and this other person, right? But at the same time, it's protecting. This hand starts to protect automatically. Just in case someone comes from the side, I can go down and hold this gun. I have my hand over this gun, I can hold it in. Right? That's why we do this. So this one arm, and we haven't even talked about coming up this holster yet. We're simply talking about this reaction um, side of the body, so to speak, right? So this reaction comes up, boom, I'm right there. Right? So let's say the whole motion was here, boom, here, right? Now this gun comes out. That's how that works. If you're gonna use that particular platform, if using another platform, here is where that gun will come out, right? So it's different for everyone. The reason why it's different for everyone is because everyone's situation is different. It may be height differences, weight differences, distance, weapon system, multiple people, lighting conditions, all types of conditions and deviations that will dictate how you extract this gun, right? So I'm here, elbows up, he knows he has to move, or he's getting hit, or I'm covering, or I'm doing something, right? My body is turning, remember, and also, again, before we extract this gun fully out of the, the ulcer, the body, the hips, right? The power comes from the hips. The power no come from the arms. The power no come from the fists. The power comes from the hips. Typically, ground up. You build a house from the ground up. You don't build a house from the top or the middle down. The foundation must be solid. So, you step back here, you see what's going on. Boom, I'm here. My legs are typically in a fighting stance. So, you see competition shooters, they'll come out there and they'll stand square. And as you can see, like this here, they'll stand square. We don't want to stand square. You don't. 
There's a reason for that. Because you stand square with someone, they can push your balance. You don't want to do that. Again, competition, very much so different than real life application, right? So competition will start here, and then they'll make the extraction and do whatever. That's what they do. They do this. That is the norm, right? In the streets, you don't know what's gonna happen to you. Somebody will bump into you, whatever. Or you may start off in a fist fight there. You know, you may start off in a fist fight or whatever. But you will quickly transition over to this gun. Also, you wanna keep in mind various clothing options that you may wear. You may wear a jacket, right? That jacket that you wear, right, may be covering the firearm. It may be what I like to call a compound concealment, meaning that not only do you have a jacket on, but you also have that firearm covered, like say under a t-shirt or another shirt if you're wearing layers or whatever. So oftentimes you would have to clear that garment, then extract the firearm, right, before you go ahead and you quote unquote punch out. You see what I'm saying? So it's different. So again, when you're here, I just want to just show you that. You know what I mean? I want to talk about it because it's very important that you understand that this motion is not simply a or or is is it's more than that. That these fine minute details is what makes or breaks you when you're getting ready to extract this firearm out of the holster. Most people when they extract the firearm out of the holster, right? They're typically gonna lose it or they're gonna fumble it. It happens, it happens to the best of people. Happens to the people that you look up to, to the people you don't know. So what we're looking to do is decrease the risk of how you say fumbling out the holster. And that starts by understanding what the total body is doing. You see what I'm saying? It's not simply, hey, I'm gonna just take this gun out. No, it's, it's a twist of the turn. I ain't gonna lie to you. Some people will say, oh, that's wasted move. No, it's wasted movement if you're a competition shooter, right? It's wasted movement for that. It's wasted movement if you're only shooting at the range. It's wasted movement if you're just simply learning how to press the trigger to shoot. It is not a wasted motion if you're in a real life application in which you gotta get somebody off you or you have to clear a garment or multiple garments. You see what I'm saying? So you have to understand, you have to count, you can't be polarized. You can't say, hey, it has to be this all the time or hey, he taught me that or she taught me that so therefore I have to do what this person showed me or else it's wrong. It's not about right or wrong. It's about what works at that particular time. You see what I'm saying? So everyone is different, everyone's training is different. And even though I may be behind the camera or I may be shooting somebody else with a camera or whatever, um, I still scroll through Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, like every other person on this earth, uh, social media or whatever. And I still do these things, but I still see the same commonality and that commonality is that polarity that it has to be this way or it has to be that way or it's going to be wrong or uh, this person must be an incompetent person because they do it a certain kind of way no you have to understand what works for me may not work for you you see what I'm saying what works for you may not work for me everyone different right so again it's a total body engagement it's not stagnant it's not uh uh, what's that word there? Um, static, right? It's the the entire body is involved, right? So when you hear and that gun comes out, you see what's going on, right? A little close, I don't know if you guys can see it or not. This is the first time working with this particular setup here. Um, but you see it, you then see the gun and it come up, boom, and you see it, it's right there. It's the same thing, nothing's changed. It's here, get them out. Right? If it's not there, it's here, get them out. It's the same thing, it, nothing changes. Nothing changes outside of that. It doesn't matter which shooting platform you're gonna use, it doesn't matter how you're going to engage the, um, the subject, right? That gun has to be uh, handled a certain kind of way. Uh, your body must move a certain kind of way and that way is gonna be dictated as far as the body is concerned and the movement and the mechanics 
and the technique is concerned by your environment, your deviations with the person that you're fighting or whatever the case may be. You see what I'm saying? So just take what I'm saying. Um, it's not the end all to be all, but most definitely um, think about it. Process it, you know, process it. And then you say, hey, I could use that, but I can't use this part. Or I can't use that, but I can use this. You see what I'm saying? So everything is different. You have to learn and understand to be you. Don't try to be like someone else. You have to stay true to you. You are the person in the hot seat at this present time when this gun comes out. You see what I'm saying? Magpul ain't coming for you to help you out when you gotta sit in the hot seat in the cart room. Right? Travis Harry, Chris Costa, or whoever else is out there, they're not coming to articulate what happened to you, right? When the police say, okay, what happened? They're not coming, right? They're not gonna pay a minimum of $10,000, $15,000 for your funeral because you failed to make the adaptation on how to handle this particular firearm, right? In that particular fight. In fact, you may not even make the news. And if you do make the news, most of the time it's like a small blip. Oh, this guy was shooting at Walmart or something like that. Oh, next place is Uga. Right? So that's what you have to understand. You work this firearm, right? When that time comes, you work this gun like you've never worked anything before in your life. You press that trigger as, as uh, aggressively as possible, right? Within the confinements of the law, right? To the best of your ability, until that threat is done. Until that man is no longer standing. Because when that time comes, if it comes, and it's probably like, you know, a 1% chance, you know, if you're doing everything you right as far, uh, doing everything right as far as risk management, mi mitigation, risk avoidance, risk transference, if you're doing everything you can do, you, you know, I'm a, I'm a project manager, I, I'm sorry, I, I can't help that, I, you know, that's how I think. Right? If you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing, there's only a 1% chance you're going to have to ever extract this gun. But that 1% chance that you ever have to extract this gun has to be the time when you can't mess up the time. You got to go out there and you got to do what you got to do. Right? Because you got to say, at the end of the day, you got to know that you are somebody, somebody. Right? And you got to have confidence to work this gun and do what you got to do. Don't try to imitate nobody else. Be you. And I'm gonna start to close the camera and say it again. No trying to be anybody else. Be you. You. Stop copying all these big name people. Let me tell you a secret, man. These big name people, they mess up all the time. They don't hit the target right all the time. They don't have the perfect extraction all the time. How I know? Because I watch them. I know people who know them and they're like, hey, look, that man messed up. Right? You see what I'm saying? So be you. Don't try to be anybody else. Get off these blogs thinking that these folks are ex because they're not. They're not. They're just people like you and me and anybody else. You do what you do. This is Father Inc. You say safe out there. And I'm going back behind the camera because I got to do another photo shoot today. Bye-bye.